morning students my name is Ajise Pokot, a teacher of physics in today's lesson we want to look at the applications of radioactivity as listed on the board the first application is on carbon dating carbon dating is a method or technique that is used to determine the age of fossils how is it being done one any living organism takes both carbon-12 and carbon-14 during its or his lifetime. Now, when the organism dies, the ratio between the carbon-12 and carbon-14 differ, and this difference is what is determined by the count rate, and from there, we can determine the age of the fossil or the dead organism. Second application is in medicine. In medicine, we majorly use the gamma rays, and also the X-rays. Gamma rays and X-rays are used to control the cancerous cells in the body. They are also used to kill the cancer cells when the tumor is subjected to it. Now, gamma rays is also used in sterilization of medical equipment in hospitals and is also used in killing pests or making them sterile in order, in order to stop further spread of the pests. Now, the other application is in detection of the pipe bursts. Usually, from the source, water is mixed with some weak radioactive elements, and these radioactive elements, once, once there is a burst within the pipe, they can easily be detected when the radioactive detectors are passed on the ground where there is a burst or where there is leakage of the water within that given place. Another application is in the detection of the thickness of the metal foil. As you can see on the diagram, we have a metal from the manufacturing process. This is how it is being done. Below the GM2, that is one of the radioactive detectors, is placed and above we have the radioactive detector itself. And in this case is the beta particles or radiation. Now in this case, the count rate as indicated in the GM2 determines the thickness of the metal. In other words, the more thicker the metal is, the slower the count rate and the more or the less the thicker the metal is, the thinner or the less thick the metal, metal is. A thicker gauge in this case can be used to automatically control the manufacturing process in the production of the metal foil. Now another application of this is in the trace elements. This is normally applicable in agriculture where the use of fertilizers and other chemicals are absorbed by the plants. When these chemicals and the fertilizers are mixed with some radioactive elements, they can easily be traced as they are being absorbed by the plants from the roots upwards up to the leaves. Then the next application is on the detection of the flowers. Now this happens when metallic structures are welded together. At the joints, in case there is some farms or regions that are not well welded, then this can be detected by the gamma radiation. It can detect areas where welding has not been done properly and therefore it can also be redone or done perfectly. Now another application in this case is still in the hospitals whereby we have the x-rays can be used to detect bones that have fractures or they can be used to detect dislocations in case of an accident and so on and so forth. Now next we are going to look at the hazards. These are the dangers of the radioactive elements. This Radioactive elements can cause cancer within the human body, 
they can cause cell mutation, they can also cause skin burns in case they are overexposed within the body. And therefore, to avoid this, then certain precautions have to be taken. One, these elements must not be held with bare hands. They must not be held with bare hands, and instead, they can be held using protected tongs when handling them to avoid exposure or direct exposure to the body. They can also be kept in thick lead boxes and also be kept within very thick walls made of bricks. This can help in case there is any leakage of the radioactive elements in the air. In hospitals, this in hospitals, sorry, radioactive absorbers can be used to protect the hospital workers against these radiations. Next application is on the nuclear fusion and also nuclear fission. And we are going to start with the nuclear fusion. Nuclear fission is the process in which light nuclei combine to form a heavier nucleus. This occurs when nuclei are made to collide at a very high velocity and also accompanied by the evolution of energy. An example is what we have here. We have this helium element combining with hydrogen combines with the hydrogen neutron to form a helium plus neutron and also energy. This energy is the one that is released and it is the one that is referred to as the nuclear energy. Now, as you can see on this other side, this is just an explanation of what occurs during the nuclear fission. Uh, two hydrogen or two nuclei combine to form one and in the process the energy is being released. When it comes to nuclear fission, Nuclear fission is the splitting of heavy nucleus to give smaller, lighter nuclei. This occurs when nuclei absorbs a neutron and is usually accompanied by evolution of energy, which in this case is the nuclear energy. An example is as illustrated here. We have the uranium-35 combining with the neutron to form to release and we have uranium-35 which is bombarded with a neutron to form uranium-236 now uranium-236 is more active than uranium-235 this uranium-236 therefore undergoes fusion or splitting and it leads to the release of uh, two elements, majorly the barium, which is 144, and also the krypton, 90, plus the energy, which we call the nuclear energy. Now, this leads to what we call the chain reaction. The process of splitting of the nuclei, the neutrons produced can as well go and bombard with other uranium nuclide and Splitting continues as shown in the diagram. From here, this is a single neutron bombarded with the uranium nuclei, and this leads to the production of two neutrons, as we can see on the diagram. Each of these neutrons again bombards with the existing uranium nuclei, again producing four other neutrons. Now, this process is continuous, and at every stage of the reaction, there is release of energy. This therefore means that at any given point where there is the production of neutrons, more and more energy is released. And if not checked, it can lead to the bursting of the reaction or explosion within the reaction. To control this, we use what we call the boron rods. Boron rods absorb excess neutrons, and this controls the production of heat energy in the nuclear 
reaction. Thank you very much. Let us meet next time.